In the previous lecture, we wrote our very first Cypress test, and we got an idea of how Cypress works. We talked about mount, we talked about using the accessibility selector, and we saw how you could assert that something does or does not exist. What we're going to do now is try and extend our test coverage a little bit, and then see how we can interact with this component. Just to give a quick review on this component, you can see we have this model value here, and this is for use with something like vModel. You can pass down your two-way binding. And the way we update that is by calling emit and passing the new value. It turns out when this compiles, it compiles to something like this. It's going to do on update model value. And it's going to look for a prop with this name and then it's going to call it passing in the new value. This is a little bit of a trick and I'm going to show you how we can take advantage of this. And then I'm going to show you my preferred way of testing these kind of components. For now, what I'd like to do is assert the following. When I type into this input, we should be emitting a new value with the, the latest value that we've typed in. We're then going to assert against that, talk about some of the advantages and disadvantages of testing like that, then we're going to see an alternative way to do this. So the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and attempt to write that test. We're going to go ahead and remove only from here. And we're going to create a very new test uh, right down here at the bottom. In this case, we're going to say it uh, responds to input going to keep all of these props the same, but we're going to pass down an additional prop, which is going to be that syntactic sugar I talked about with the on update. Just to give you an idea of how this works, I can do something like on update model value, and this is going to be a function that gets called with the new val. If this works uh, as I expect, I should be able to do a console log here and see something in my console like new value. Let's go ahead now and give this one a try. If we go ahead and save this off, head back to our browser and open up the console. I'm just going to uh, move it to the bottom so we can actually see what's going ahead and clear this one. If I go ahead now and type, we are going to see that input. So this is working correctly. It's grabbing this value and it's going to console log. Instead, if console logging, we can do something called using a stub and observe this value. Let me show you how that works. Let's go ahead and replace this one now. I'm going to delete this one here. And we're going to pass in a stub and a cert. So I can just go ahead and say const stub is equal to sci.stub, and then we can go and pass this one in down here. Finally, we can make an assertion against this when we type. So what we can do is something like this. First, I'm just going to run this one, and then we're going to say sci.get. I'm going to grab the input, and then we're going to go ahead and type into it. I'm going to, uh, let's go ahead and just add a new value. In fact, let's go ahead and clear the whole thing, and then I'm going to type in my name. Let's go ahead and save this and see what happens. We can see this stub is getting called many times. Every time I input, so seven times for my name, it's going to call that stub. We can then go ahead and write an assertion. So for example, I could do something like this. Inside of a then callback, I can say expect stub to have been called, and we should assert what value this was called with. So being called with, I believe is how we do it. <laughs> there we go, it's kind of hard to remember. In this case, it's going to be called with L, and that is going to pass. Again, let's make it fail, and this is going to fail. And this is one way you could test this. We are asserting that everything is hooked up correctly. Having said that, this is really not my ideal way to assert, and there's a few reasons for that. Firstly, this is not exactly the most real-world scenario. We're not really going to be using a stub when we use this in our application. Secondly, we're not actually responding to any of our validation. This is going to be potentially too short, and I'd like to be able to validate that when my input is too short, we are going to show some validation in here. What I'm going to do is build a little wrapper component to simulate how we're using this in a real world application. Just to give you an idea of the actual application, it looks like this. So we're wrapping two inputs inside of a form. One other option would be simply to test this form and implicitly test our component validation. And that's probably something we will do later on. For now, instead, what I'm going to do is show you how to use a wrapper component, and this is definitely my preferred way of testing, and we'll talk about why after we get it working. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove that stub, and I'm also going to remove this assertion down here. We're now going to create a new component. I'm going to call my one parent, and that one is going to be using define component. Just to show you where define component comes from, it was automatically imported from view. Uh, even to make it more clear, I might just move this import down here for now, uh, just so you know what's going on. Apparently I can't do that, of course I can't, it's inside of it block, I'm going to leave it up the top instead. What I am going to do is just move this entire assertion, or this entire test, right up the top, uh, just to make it really clear what's going on. The next thing we're going to do is create a new template, and this is where we're going to render our component. So I'm going to render my form input inside of here. 
The next thing we're going to do is pass down our props. So we're going to have the username as name. I'm going to use vmodel and we're going to bind to something called username as well. Uh, we're going to have the status and this is going to be dynamic. So I'm going to bind to a variable called status and the type is just going to be text. Finally, we have to go ahead and define these values. So I'm going to create a new setup function as we do and just go ahead and define those values. In this case, we're going to have our vmodel, so const username, and that's going to be a ref, which is going to be imported from view. Huh. That's why I moved this test up the top so you can see where these imports come from. We're going to start off with a default value. The next thing I'm going to do is have a status, and that is also going to be a ref of a status type, which is imported from validation. Huh. Just a reminder, it's going to be valid and message for the two properties. And this is actually going to be a computed property I think would be more appropriate than a ref. And the reason I'm using computed is this is going to be dynamic depending on the value of username. It is still going to be a status, so let's pass that one in. And now what we're going to do is go ahead and write our value here. So whether this is valid is going to depend on the username length. We're going to say username.value.length is greater than five. So it has to be longer than five. The next thing we're going to do is return the correct interface here. So valid and message. Depending on the valid status, we're going to change the message. So if valid is true, it's going to be uh, undefined, I suppose. And otherwise, it's going to give us an error. So we're going to go ahead and just pass an error. In this case, let's say it is too short. Finally, to make sure this actually works, we need to return both of these values just to make these ones available inside of our template. Let's go ahead now and give this one a try. All we need to do is take this parent component and pass it into our mount function. We also don't need to use the props anymore because we defined all those props up here. Let's go ahead and delete this one now too. It's going to make things a lot more simple. Finally, let's save it off and see what happens. Uh, unfortunately, nothing has been rendered, not exactly what I was expecting. Uh, let's see if we can figure out what's going on. I see the problem. We haven't registered our component. Let's go ahead and pass that one in here. Now that we've done that, it's going to be available to our template. And if we save it off, uh, unfortunately, this is still not getting rendered because I made a typing error down here. Uh, this is still not getting rendered because I've obviously made a mistake somewhere along the line. I'm not too sure what that error would be. Uh, let's see if we can find out. <laughs> we'll check the console. This should give us some useful information. It says here failed to resolve custom component and that's because I spelled components wrong. <laughs> and now everything is working correctly. I am kind of surprised I didn't get an error there. I guess TypeScript is not exactly doing what it's supposed to. Might take a look into that later. Either way, this is now functioning. Finally, now that this is working, we can go ahead and start writing our assertions. Right now, my username is valid, so I'm going to go ahead and assert that. So let's go ahead and say site.get. We are going to look for that alert, so I'm going to say role equals alert, and make sure this one is not rendered. And that means we can go ahead and do exactly the same assertion. We can just say should not exist. And that is passing. The next thing we're going to do is type, and then we're going to make this too short, and the error then should exist. So the assertion is going to look something like this. We're going to go ahead and grab our input by just saying input. We're then going to clear it out and that's going to make it empty. And if we save this and run it, we are getting that error. It is working correctly. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is also assert that the error message is correct. So we're going to say it should contain text, contain text. And that's just going to be it is too short. Finally, let's save it off. And that is now passing as well. There's a couple of really nice things here. The first is we're actually getting a lot more coverage from this one test than we did from the other two. So we can actually go ahead and delete both of these tests. We are getting significantly better coverage. Uh, this is definitely my preference nowadays. There was a time where I used to like writing lots of very simple granular tests, but I realized I just wrote a lot more code than I really needed to write and ultimately wasted a lot of time. Uh, I think this is a lot more valuable. Uh, these tests are a lot more clear with something like Cypress as opposed to something like JSTOM and Jest because you can actually see what's going on. Another really cool thing you can do is something like Cypress.pause. Go ahead and save this and we can come up here and actually step through this. I can see what's happening each step of the way. And this is also a really nice way to uh, assert the styling is correct as you work through your component as well. Either way, that's now working correctly, which is uh, pretty nice, but there are still some improvements we can make to this test. We haven't got full test coverage. What we're not asserting against is the label. If I click on this label, this should be focused. And we're currently not asserting that. If I come over to my form input and go ahead and delete this label, everything is still passing. And I'm not super happy about that. I would like that to fail. 
Let's go ahead now and write that assertion. It is going to be fairly easy. What we can do is say sci.get and go ahead and grab our label. In this case, it's going to be this one up here. So I can just say label. And then we're going to look for the correct text. Again, this is not the best for accessibility. It may come back and fix that. But for now, let's just go ahead and get something working. That one is still passing. So what we're now going to do is click on it. And that should then correctly focus our input. All we need to do is say sci.get. We're going to grab our input. And then we're going to assert that it is going to be focused. So I can say should be focused. Save it off and that is still passing. Finally, as I said before, I like to make sure things are failing uh, after I write the test. So if I head back to my component now and delete the label, this one is going to fail as expected. I can also go ahead and delete the for attribute and that's going to cause everything to fail as well. So I'm fairly confident at this point we have correct coverage. Everything is working as expected. The nice thing is this test is very concise. I wrote uh, not that much code and we've actually managed to get 100% coverage across this entire component. We've also got a mini environment for developing our interface, kind of like Storybook. Uh, I'm pretty happy with this, so I'm going to leave this test here. There are definitely some improvements we could make, for example, improving the accessibility. Instead of using label and input, we could potentially use a role or something like that. But I think this is definitely a good example to get us started with Cypress component testing. The final thing we could do is assert the styles are correct using something like Percy or a visual regression testing service. Uh, maybe an exercise for later on, but for now I am going to leave this component and in the next lecture we're going to move on to a different component that's going to show us some more complexity and techniques.